just want to say first off that nobody asked me to make that video. It's done for my own creative purposes and to push the boundaries to see how far I can take video. Also, I just love making them. But I'm going to try and get more content out because I'm aware I don't make as many videos as some and pick and choose which videos I go full freight on. But you know what? I'm going to say it straight away. This is a product to choose. And sometimes in audio, you get products that come along like the DCS Bartok, Chords, Dave Dak, Hegel's, Mohican CD player, rest in peace. <laughs> and obviously they're integrated range, but you know the saying, you get what you... Well, it's certainly true with this product and it deserves to be right up there in the discussion. So this is actually a two box R2R ladder DAC based DAC, power supply unit and DAC unit. And this is the one up from the spring DAC from Hollow Audio that I've already reviewed, the May DAC. And it's the KTE model, Kitsune Tuned Edition stands for. And you also get with it this nice little card type remote. This DAC has like, well, national defense establishment build quality when you look at it, especially metal quality. And if you look at the top, you'll see the little Kitsune badge. It's made out of copper, but more than that, slabbed anodized aluminium, but on all sides. And if you're thinking Mercedes panel gaps, It actually feels, or it actually, well, it does, it looks better made than the similarly priced Cord Hugo TT2 in terms of the casework, finish and metal quality, also the socketry at the back. And someone's given this DAC lots of love, attention and attention to detail. <laughs> This is a dual mono DAC design with left and right sides that are discrete all the way from the power supply to the DAC's output, but it uses dual O-type flat wire transformers, not the traditional donut shaped toroids, which is to limit the electromagnetic field for obvious beneficial effects. Because it's actually a pure DAC, there is no preamp option like there is with the spring models. This DAC is obviously a true balance design with the XLR outputs. Who would be expecting them to be cosmetic at this price? I don't know. But you'll notice the RCA outputs as well. But in terms of digital inputs, a whole suite of them, coaxial BNC, coaxial RCA, optical, USB 2 and then 110 ohm AES connection. And then finally, these two HDMI based I squared S connections. So this DAC has four modes of operation, non oversampling NOS, then oversampling, which is to convert PCM to higher rate PCM and DSD to higher rate DSD. And then an oversampling PCM mode which is to, regardless of what is input, to oversample to PCM and similarly an oversampling DSD mode. Again, whether it's PCM or DSD, oversample to DSD. So you've also got a setting to turn PLL on or off, and I'll come on to that in a minute. You can change the I squared S pinouts because remember it's a non-standard connection. And by the way, on that score, Hollow Audio do say that by separating out the clock and data signals that's associated to that type of connection, you get less jitter. And the final thing to say is that you can change the polarity of the RCA and XLR outputs. Not being all, you know, salesman -y, but when you see this DAC, then you hear it. And then you go under the bonnet and take the case off 
Although, don't be doing that because you'll invalidate your warranty. And I don't want that happening to you. Remember, only I can do that. I'm allowed to do that. You basically see the insides and it's like a kind of rubber stamping exercise to how good this thing is, even if you know absolutely nothing about electronics. So this stack uses its own proprietary PLL or phase lock loop circuit to eliminate jitter. And jitter is obviously time distortions of the audio signal that lead to a degradation of sound quality. But the PLL circuit is basically to match the frequency of the DAC's clock with the incoming audio signals clock to eliminate that jitter using the Hollow Audio's VCXO clock. This DAC doesn't actually use an off-the-shelf POL circuit and Jeff Zhu of Hollow Audio has gone to great lengths to design this custom circuit as you'll see if you check out other reviews as well to get crazy signal to noise ratios and dynamic range and if you think I'm taking a reviewer bullshit pill then take a chill pill yourself because you can turn POL on and off obviously and if you do turn it off, you'll immediately notice collapsing of the sound stage, depth and timbre information, a much more compressed overall sound. In most R2R DACs, you can't play DSD on them because DSD is in one bit and most R2R DACs have a 16-bit ladder. So you have to convert the DSD to PCM to feed it through the ladder. In this particular DAC, Hollow Audio just went to the trouble of creating a separate DSD DAC to deal with that. Another easy one that's really easy to get on board with is the galvanic isolation on the USB board of this DAC. You can actually see the gaps in the circuit next to these isolation transformers on the USB board. Obviously that's going to have big advantages in terms of isolating electrical circuits. Another thing to say about their linear compensation technology, and I'm going to read from what I've been told, and Jeff Zhu of Hollow Audio told me, linear compensation is about fixing the resistor tolerance problem that is critical and most hard to do in R2R DACs. So the requirement of resistor precision is insane for R2R, and that's why R2R chips like PCM1704 are so expensive and it loses its market to Delta Sigma DAX. R2R is not a hard thing to do, he says. As you can see, there are more and more discrete R2R DAX over the last few years. But if they can't solve the precision problem, then R2R DAX can look gorgeous by having full resistors and capacitors on a big board. But in fact, when you test it, it shows poor performance, worse than PCM1704, which is made about 30 years ago. These R2R DACs with poor precision can still have natural sounding performance by way of R2R architecture, but they'll be poor at detail, dynamic range, sound staging and layering. So, Many audiophile related R2R DACs are actually old school style, he says, but slow and comforting in the way they present music. He says again that May is not related to the old style R2R sound, and this is their goal to have state of the art performance of R2R having the R2R advantage, but with 
that detail character and dynamic character that I talked about. And that's certainly true when you listen to this DAC, that what they're saying ties in with your experience of it. One other thing to say on operation, this DAC can get quite warm because it uses a class A output That's to do with the biasing and switching of the output. And I was using mine during the UK's recent lovely heat wave that we've been having, and it did actually get quite hot, but I probably needed to separate these two units and have them side by side. But for everyday use, other than during that period, just runs nice and warm. So I've mainly been using this DAC in non-oversampling mode using the USB input from my NUOS Zenith. Sorry, I don't have an I2S outputting device, so I've not been able to try that connection. But I also did try USB into this DAC from my Sonore Optical Rendu, great little device in terms of isolation from your network. And you did notice the difference that that made over the Inuos. Again, something that I notice with Hollow Audio Spring DAC, if you check out that review. Quick shout out to Martin at Audio Store in the UK who sent me this Audio Phonics linear power supply for the Sonore. Check out his website. actually had this DAC for around five to six weeks so I'm able to really pinpoint its character and the first thing to say is that it's definitely optimized for MOS playback but let's not get so pretentious with descriptors about this DAC that you don't know what the hell I'm talking about but it's in the mid-range and the depth staging that this DAC is so impressive and basically it's standout character but it gets it across in a soft way, which ironically is not devoid of any detail. Transiently and timbrally, it's extremely accomplished as well. The Spring Free Level 2 has more of a sense of decay, but the May gets things across in a much more musical way. <laughs> Scrap that, I mean natural way. Same thing though, ain't it? This DAC is very neutral as well and absolutely perfect with treble. But what's really surprising too is how dynamic it is with bass. Normally you have tone and less bass dynamics or less tone and better bass dynamics. In this case, this DAC has tone and bass dynamics. So in that sense, it really pleases an electronic junkie like me as much as it's capable as playing something like Henry Mancini's Dreamsville that I've been playing recently, that delicate piano sounds absolutely miles away from your listening position. And that's that depth staging going on that I'm talking about. So it's all there with Whipway sound staging too. But boy, is this an all rounder for all musical tastes. And if you like to extrapolate R to R thinking, in terms of DACs like Denifrips' Venus 2 or Pontus 2, that all R2R -R DACs are smooth in tone and relatively more relaxed with speed, this hollow audio just trashes that type of extrapolated thinking. First thing to say comparison wise is that this May DAC is on a similar level in terms of its depth staging creation to the TT2 
and M scalar combo in my system. And whilst I had those two components a while ago, I'm fairly sure because I had them for some time. It's gonna be a preference thing, but the May is not as raw as the chord in the chord's tonal detail proposition, nor the TT2's deeper kicking bass, if maybe marginally more precise than the May though. But the TT2 just has a narrower sound stage and without the separation of the music of this hollow audio, also without the luxury tone, ease and naturalness of the May. The TT2 was actually the DAC that I was going to buy myself if I was going to do an upgrade of a DAC around this type of price. But in fact now it would be this May DAC. And that's not to say this May is inverted commas better than the TT2 because I reiterate it comes down to preference. But it is for me and it's just, it's just more hi-fi, if we could put it like that, and analogue. Also, because dynamically and transiently across the frequency range, the hollow audio is close enough to be the TT2's equal there, you get the best of both worlds in terms of tone and speed. Okay, Contrary to some yours. commentators, and I'm happy to shoot this one down, I'm this sorry, DAC Dave. isn't the proposition of chords, Dave. That. You probably wouldn't expect it to be because in the UK this is £5,000. The Dave, I think at the moment, is £10,000. And the Dave has that jaw-dropping, detail-pulling, headphone-esque type character in a hi-fi system that is unequaled. And that's the reason why it's the better proposition. But you know what? This may not actually be pertinent. Sorry, may. <laughs> because, you know, this DAC is end game for lots of people, certainly is for me. It's more naturally resolving and dynamic and creates more depth than a PS Audio direct stream. It's maybe not as naturally wide and smooth as the PS Audio, but I think for neutral systems, this main character of the PS Audio isn't a match for this hollow audio in terms of its overall impressiveness as a DAC. Hollow Audio actually state in their manual, may, the possibility of. Maybe if you look at the negative connotation to that, it actually downplays this product. But the possibility is quite a lot. Thanks for watching.
Thank you.